So I was talking about uh, the role of the gut microbiome in um, autoimmunity. I was discussing uh, what we know so far uh, about the role that the gut bacteria and other gut microbes play in autoimmunity, specifically uh, what's known about the role of the gut microbiota in uh, the animal models of MS and what preliminary studies we have so far in, in patients with MS. You know, the role in MS is still being defined because there have been fairly few studies that have been actually done in MS. So uh, a lot of work has currently been done in the animal model of MS, which is called uh, EAE, or Experimental Autoimmune Encephalomyelitis. And there, people have shown that if you have mice that don't have um, gut microbiota, so you can grow them in a germ-free environment, um, they have very little susceptibility to developing EAE or you know the, the animal uh, form of MS. What's, what we're trying to find out is whether the microbiome differs in some way in patients with MS compared to uh, healthy people and those who don't have autoimmune disease and what preliminary studies are showing so far is that there might be a difference in um, certain bacterial groups between MS patients and healthy controls. And what that would suggest is if, if we are able to find out which bacteria differ, perhaps there might be a way to correct that. Well, so I think, um, you know, the, the, the breadth and the importance of the gut microbiome was not recognized until fairly recently, so you know, only in the last six or seven years have people really been working on this. Um, and, and I mean, part of that was just the fact that we have so many different kinds of bacteria, so traditional methods of you know, cult culturing bacteria are not enough to identify this. So as there's been a uh, improvement in uh, genetic techniques, uh, you know, like there's the 16S ribosomal RNA sequencing, and then now just metagenomics where you can take all the DNA out of your fecal matter, amplify it, and then match it to uh, different organisms. It's that advances in, in you know, that technology as well as bioinformatics is really what's enabled us to study, study these bacteria. I think there's two uh, facets to it. One is trying to figure out if uh, the gut microbiome is playing a role in instigating MS and, you know, it, is it part of uh, the gene and environment interaction that, uh, you know, people talk about uh, as predisposing people to developing MS. So, so that's, that's part of it is to try, try and figure out whether is this part of the cause of MS. But this, the second part of it um, is, you know, whether we can modulate it to actually help treat MS. And, you know, there are different methods of modulating it that are being uh, studied. One is, you know, giving people probiotics. So you might try giving people bacteria that do things um, that might be beneficial for MS. For example, uh, there are probiotics that people have shown in uh, animal models that will increase the number of regulatory T cells. And so you might think that something like that might be helpful in MS patients. And then another way people are modulating the gut microbiota is by fecal transplantation. And that besides being used in, you know, Clostridium difficile diarrhea, where, um, where that's because uh, your gut microbiome is severely affected and then you have overgrowth of this bacteria, and it's extremely effective uh, in that condition. There was a recent trial where they actually used it in ulcerative colitis, where there was a beneficial effect over placebo. So, so you, we might be seeing some, some signs that there might be a benefit in some autoimmune diseases as well. Hopefully, um, we'll have larger studies that validate you know, findings that have been described so far because uh, currently a lot of the findings are contradictory and, and you know different groups have identified different classes of bacteria that are that are um, altered between 
MS patients and healthy people. So, uh, you know, once we have larger studies that are replicating findings across groups, uh, we, we kind of begin to understand why this may be important. And what you have to realize is that, you know, part determining which uh, bacteria are different is just part of the part of the puzzle because all these bacteria have different functions and different, uh, they produce different metabolites and those have their own effects on the body. So uh, it, what may be important may be actually determining what the function of these bacteria is, are and then perhaps that might be another uh, way of intervening is by actually uh, trying to find out what the function is and intervening downstream of that.